Hi folks, welcome to Wednesday widget number 70. Super exciting, we're starting a video series on making this clamp. And we're gonna do the whole thing in Fusion 360. And I'm really excited about that because when I say the whole thing, I mean all of the CAD, including the right way to be smart about how we create this parametrically and as an assembly, all the joints, the motion studies, contact sets, you know, some more advanced type stuff that I think folks have questions about in Fusion 360. We're gonna use Fusion 360 to do the cam for the plasma, for the mill, for the lathe. We'll use it to create some fixtures, I think, for the plasma parts on the mill. It should all be awesome. And then we will also, um, this is new for me, try to use the FEA analysis in Fusion 360 to see just how strong and rigid this clamp can be. So I'm really excited. I wanted to create this as a separate little intro breakout video because video sort of one will be the hardcore CAD and I didn't want folks to have to rewatch, you know, you know, a minute and 50 of me introducing the project if they want to dive back into the CAD. One of the things I just learned at Autodesk University out in Vegas that really matters is the philosophy behind how you create assemblies or, or parts even in Fusion 360. I used to do, I think what a lot of folks do, which is just a new design and you just start sketching. The problem with that is you're creating the sketches and bodies and components, which I'll come back to, um, in the sort of parent level. And if there's an analogy to SolidWorks, which I, I almost hate to say because you have to stop comparing it to SolidWorks, it's just different and different is okay. But that would almost be like starting your model in an assembly file, which you don't do in SOLIDWORKS. You create individual parts and you bring them together. So the first thing you want to do in Fusion 360 for a new design is right click and choose new component. You can name your component and then you need to activate it with this little radio button. I don't love the fact that it's a couple of extra steps to do that, but I'm willing to let that pass because I still love this software. Here's what you need to understand. There are sketches, bodies, and components. A component is something that exists in the real world. So this bracket right here, just this top one, it would be a component because it's a discrete part in the real world. So what's the difference between that and a body? Well, a body is basically worth irrelevant for guys like us that are sort of machinist type designers because a body, the best example that they gave at AU is a coffee mug. If you're modeling a coffee mug, it's one component, you know, the mug itself, but you may need to have two or three or four bodies that create that component because it may be easier to have one body be the cylindrical cup and another body that's this contoured shaped handle and another body that's something else. Um, but we don't really think like that, at least I don't. So. What you do care about is creating a new component. And what will happen is you'll have, you know, when we're done with this clamp file, you won't have any bodies or sketches in the parent. Every body or sketch, for the most part at least, will be within each component. We'll, we'll give you an example of that when we dive into part one right here. But uh, with that, folks, I'm really excited. I want to show folks how easy it is to do this stuff in Fusion 360. There's a lot of stuff on joints, all that stuff. So click here for part one, folks, and enjoy.